Welcome everybody to another episode of HomeKit Insider. As always with me is Stephen Robles, but I tricked you, Stephen. It's not really me here today. No, I'm just a bottle of cold medicine being held up by sticks. So I'm going to let you talk through a lot of this news because I have been feeling terrible and I'm going to be over here doing my best William impression and just sipping on some tea. Though I do feel like Ted Lasso a lot because tea is not my thing. Uh, I don't mean to offend an entire country, but this does taste like I scooped it out of out of the drain outside and then warmed <laughs> it up to make it acceptable. Uh, it's just not my well, thing, but you know it's warm, so I'm going wow. with it for today. I have to I have to tell our viewers and listeners before we hit record, Andrew was like, uh, like he was dying, <laughs> like he sounded so sick. And as soon as they cut the countdown to record, he was like, "Welcome to Home Kid Inside." <laughs> like you brought an energy that I was not expecting. And so, kudos to you. Yeah, so sorry, <laughs> so sick. Cough medicine and tea. What kind of tea are you drinking? <sighs> what what flavor is that? I don't know. It's yeah. uh, brown. <laughs> Tea. Okay. It's tea. All of, all <laughs> of there... our UK listeners, tell us uh, what should Andrew be drinking uh, instead of whatever brown thing <laughs> he's drinking. I'm hoping, Stephen, by the time that our listeners are listening to this or watching yes. me flail, uh, this will be gone, and I will be back to human form instead of <laughs> cold medicine <laughs> form. I, but, I hope know. so too, man. Well, I will try to uh, I'll try to help you out as much as I can. We have, we have some news here and some devices I wanted to talk about. Have some uh, things like this Acara Cube that I would definitely want to talk about. There it is. This is the T1 Pro Cube. We talked about it last week, and I got it in hand. So lots of stuff to talk about. Let's get into it. One five star review shout out Andrew Matthews, who is writing in from the United Arab Emirates all the way over there. So thanks for that five star review. Much appreciated. All right. So let's get to some news. I'm, you know what? I don't even know what order. we're. Gonna, I'm just going to go in the order we have it in the note here. Some of it's news. Some of it's devices. We'll just see what happens. First of all, Home Plus, an incredible app. We've talked about it in the past many times, but has a huge update. It is now Home Plus 6. And not only is uh, some redesigns, the app looks great. You know, if you're looking for a really visually appealing app to control your home stuff, uh, it is really great. Let me turn the brightness down so it actually looks good on camera. Here it is, Home Plus 6. You have all the nice summary. You can go into a specific room, and you got all the nice things there, temperature, lights, all that kind of stuff. But big thing in Home Plus 6, widgets. They, he added widget controls for individual accessories or scenes, and it's widgets for the home screen as well as the lock screen. So you can add an individual accessory or even run a scene directly from a lock screen widget on your iPhone. Great update. Very cool. Good on it. The one thing I also really like with this update, Stephen, is they've added support for the the historical data on sensors that support it, which is more or less the Eve sensors. So Eve, everything is native HomeKit, but they're able to keep, uh, you know, history and data over time, which is, it's like native HomeKit functionality, just not displayed in the Home app. So things like your your contact sensors of when they're like their door, door history open and closing, uh, or a temperature sensor over time, usually in the Home app, you're just seeing that like snapshot right when you mm. look at it. But in the Eve app, you could see it over time graphically and see how it changes uh, over periods. And now that's supported here in Home Plus 6 as well, which is pretty cool because if you want to use this app, now you get all that historical data as well as this refreshed UI and, and widgets and all that kind of fun stuff. Very cool. And you can even set a custom wallpaper uh, to the app, which I, I just added a photo right there. And <laughs> look, at all those, look at all those devices right there. This is the Home Plus app. If you like the uh, the older style home app, but you want more control and just better stuff, Home Plus 6. It's really good. Really good app. Really good update. So very cool. Is a Matthias Hotchkaterer. Is that his name? Uh, maybe I got it We've right. We've been down this road before, Stephen. <laughs> We've been down this road before. Whoops. All right. I won't try it again. But anyway, good on you. Uh, home Plus 6. Great app. All right. Maris. Maris has announced new smart plugs and these are Matter, Matter certified smart plugs from Maris. And because they are Matter certified, they should work 
in HomeKit, but they're not like HomeKit first. Uh, as far as their website, it says this is a Matter Smart Wi-Fi plug. It's a two-pack. You can get it for $35, tax included, apparently. Uh, these aren't shipping for a little while. End of December, that shipping time is actually sold out. So if you want to get these, might not even be till January 31st. Uh, if Maris, if you want to send us some of these, I would love to try it because I think this might be the first Matter device that you can get in the U.S. that's not necessarily HomeKit specific. It's just Matter, but you should be able to put it in the Home app because Home supports Matter now in 16.1. So uh, this seems pretty cool. This might be one of the first widely available Matter devices that actually matters for HomeKit users. See what I did there? So, Stephen, yeah. is this is I did it. Just anyway. trying to make sure this is uh, right. We we covered the launch of the Matter, the Maris Matter plugs, like two or three episodes ago. Is this a, is the two pack new or is this the same one? Because um, I can't remember kind of... when we covered it a couple weeks ago. They did have a two pack. Oh, okay, they did have a two pack. I didn't know if it was HomeKit or Matter. I'm not sure. I just know. I, yeah, I saw when they this, announced it, it uh -huh. was it was big deal because it was the first like actual Matter product to go on sale. A lot of products are getting firmware updates. Okay, um, you know, like the Eve stuff should get firmware updates before these right. hit shelves. But these are the first ones that you can actually buy, which is still a a big deal and going to be interesting okay. to test out. We got to be getting some updates soon, right? I, mean, I would hope. So. I would hope. I think so. we heard things in December. Yeah, Eve had some stuff promised soon. I'm sure we're going to get some firmware updates for devices very, very soon. Yes, I hope so too. Uh, one quick follow-up from last episode. I talked about something called a Hubitat. Hubitat is a new hub that can bring some Z-Wave and Zigbee devices into HomeKit, even though uh, that aren't necessarily HomeKit native. Um, Hubitat actually reached out. I had mentioned last time that you might need to integrate it with HomeBridge. That is not the case. If you get a Hubitat, hub, it will actually be able to be added to HomeKit, and then ZigBee and Z-Wave devices can go through that into HomeKit. No HomeBridge, the, you know, third-party, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's not needed. You don't need HomeBridge. And uh, I think they might actually be sending me one to try out. And so, yeah, uh, we'll see. But that was Hubitat. No HomeBridge needed. And we'll put a link uh, again in show notes. We talked about that last week. Um, I want to talk briefly about the Acara T1 Pro Cube. I know you actually have the last version of this thing. Uh, did, did you get one of the new ones? One of the one of the new pro ones? No, it has not arrived yet. I still have the OG hanging out here. Okay, <clears throat> let me ask you something. That OG, how do you trigger controls on it? What is the mechanism? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I think you just turn. Yeah, I think you. I th was you just turned it to the right side up? Yes. And so I, I opened this thing. I looked at the manual and it basically, there's a bunch of different like movements and controls you can do. Like you can like yeah. twist it and that could like dim a thing and you can like roll it like a dice and that'll do something else. But the only thing available to HomeKit specifically is to pick it up and put it down with one of the sides facing up. So you see, you know, you have the dots on the sides. There's the four, there's the two. So basically the only HomeKit control you get is take this cube and then turn it and set it down on a table with the number you want facing upwards, and that will trigger the scene or accessory that you have programmed. I don't like it, Andrew. I don't like this thing. I know, I know like, it's, it's That's the same like, as it was before. I thought, I thought that was, like, a trick question. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, you just put whatever side up, and that sets your scene. That's it. It's very simple. It has an added functionality, yeah. but for, for HomeKit stuff specifically, scenes, accessories, just put that side up, and it controls it. I don't know what I was thinking. I assumed that each side was a button somehow. Like, I thought you could be able to, like, click each side, which I think is the case with the – uh, nano leaf dodecahedron, right? Like, oh, well, those are not buttons. How do you no, do you that? Just put the side up. Oh, it was the same deal. I thought those were buttons same too. Thing. Nope. You just put the okay. side up. You turn it to whatever. You look at it. I want this one, and then set it down with that side up, and it sets that scene. But it did have the rotating functionality, which I I think was limited to just the nano leaf lights, uh, not native home kit. But um, okay could be wrong in that one because I haven't tried in a little while. But, yeah, it still had the rotating functionality to adjust brightness, but you just set the side up. 
Okay. Well, okay. So here's what I want. I actually want a product that doesn't exist, which is a cube like <laughs> this with a button on each side. That's actually what I want is a six button home kit controller. Uh, but that's not what this is. So yes, the only way to control it is to pick it up, place it. The thing is, I, I, I was very excited. I programmed each side to run a different scene here in the studio. And then I realized I can't touch it. I can't pick it up and put it down because it's going to trigger a scene. Like <laughs> I don't, I don't have an option to not trigger. So if you program all six sides to do something, it's going to do something every time you move it. So like, I wasn't thinking about it. It was sitting on the desk. I picked it up and I moved it over two feet and then all the lights in my studio changed. Now <laughs> you can leave one blank, like leave one of the sides blank. So it doesn't have anything programmed and just always remember to put that face up whenever you do it. But I, I was just not, I'm not crazy about that interaction. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this. I'll see if maybe one of my kids want to use it to control their room. and They can try and like put it down on the different scenes. But I, I just, I had the wrong idea of what this was. I thought it was six buttons. It is not. You pick it up, you put it down. That's the only method of control. Meh. So anyway, that's the, that's my, that's the cube. Just know what you're getting uh, when you get it. But I do want to give Akara a shout out, uh, kind of separately, unrelated. I was trying some of the apps that we've talked about recently to set up notifications for when a door is left open. And we've talked about this many times. Like, how do you get a notification if a door is left open, a window is left open? And I looked because I actually have a bunch of the Akara contact sensors. I actually have one right here because I've been putting them everywhere. They're some of the most inexpensive. They were on sale for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. They were like really cheap. This is the Akara contact sensor, very low profile. And uh, I realized the Akara app has the ability to let you know when a contact sensor has been left open for a certain amount of time. It just has that built into the app, much like other apps, you know, that let you do that. And I was like, you know what, let me just try their notification, see how that works. And works like a charm. Akara app will send me a notification if any of the doors are left open for more than five minutes, the notif you can program it in your focus modes to always come through, even if you're in the middle of a focus mode, and it works great. And so you can still fiddle with some of those third-party applications that use like um, different URL schemes to trigger a notification through shortcuts. I, I was trying to set it up with, what was the app we talked about a couple episodes ago? It was, we talked about it last week. Oh, man, I the forget what it's called. Home yes, control? home, home controller. Yes. yes, home controller plus plus or whatever that is. Yeah, you have the screenshot. Controller for HomeKit, which is a great app. Um, but I was trying to set up the notifications <clears throat> for that in the controller for HomeKit app because you can do a, if a door is left open, whatever. But you have to do this weird thing with URLs and set up a shortcut and it triggers a server. It was a little complicated. I got it to work, but I'm like, I don't want to do this for every contact sensor. It's, it's too much. So using the Akara app notifications for when a door is left open works great. So kudos to Akara for that. These are some of my favorite contact sensors. So don't like the cube, but I like the contact sensors. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> so there you go. Do you have any, do you have any of those set up if a door is left open for a certain amount of time? I Ooh. don't. I we I kind of talked about that before. I I want this. I need this, but it's already a convoluted mess in terms of contact sensors on our doors. It looks ridiculous. Um, I have a multitude of them and some I don't want to rid myself of. I mean, some are the Eve ones that, that work with thread, which is really handy and they're going to work with matter, which will be nice. And then we're going to have, um, I have ones from Ecobee because those are used to control my thermostat. So we often leave like the back door or a window open mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. that is open it'll automatically pause my thermostat. So I'm not just like, you know, heating the outdoors. So that's really handy and just automatically does it don't have to set anything up even uh, to enable that functionality. So like I need those sensors for those things. And some are just like, like basically just glued on there and they're being a pain in the butt to try to remove them and, and buy all new yes. sensors just because a car has better notifications. And those notifications are kind yeah. of outside of home kit, which is frustrating. So this is more of just like kicking apple on the shins to just give us like these alerts that, that are kind of common sense, but I really want it on yeah. the, on the front door to know when that one's been left open. Um, that's the one I worry about most. 
Yeah. We just need if a door is left open as a automation. That's all we need, Apple. Maybe you can add that in whatever, Iowa 17. But It should literally it just should be a, a timer like a, for notifications. Yeah. You already get notification if open and closed. Notify if open for and then have a little slider for like one minute, 30 seconds, one minute, you know, 20 minutes, whatever, and yeah. send a notification. Easy. Boom. That's it. It's easy. Oh, I also did, um, I just mentioned real quick, I got a four pack of Maris, uh, was it Maris? I got a four pack of smart plugs because we've been putting up Christmas lights and the kids have like lights in their rooms, like all over their beds. And I was like, as you do, I want these in home kit <laughs> because why not? And so, yeah, I ordered, these were not, these are not the matter new plugs. This is their older, it's the Maris Smart Plug Mini, but I got a four pack for $30 and uh, they work great. Uh, I just want to mention. So Maris, HomeKit Smart Plugs, solid. That's all I want to say. Uh, before we get to some Eufy controversy, Eufy controversy, I want to talk about that. And uh, also the Hue app was updated. I want to get to that. But we have one sponsor this week and we want to thank them from the bottom of our hearts this holiday season, Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best artists, icons, and leaders anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. I love Masterclass. You can learn the art of negotiation, which I've talked about from Chris Voss. You can learn songwriting from John Legend. You can learn business strategy from Bob Iger. I mean, he like Disney and told him to come back. That's how amazing Bob Iger is. So you can learn about business strategy from him. And because this is the holiday season as we record, you can learn how to use your voice as an instrument from Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey herself teaches a master. Andrew, I think you should take that master class. I think uh, I've got this. <laughs> hey, I just want to sing you some whistle tone for uh, all I want for Christmas is you. But listen, master class, they have over 2,500 classes from over 180 instructors Every class is beautifully shot. Cinematography is great. Sounds great. And you can do it at your own pace. You know, each lesson is about 12 to 15 minutes long. Do it on a lunch break or binge. And binge, binge watch like a whole class. I mean, you can watch some holiday Christmas movies. That's fine. But then actually learn you something. You know what I'm saying? Learn how to do something. Learn a new skill. Learn about space from Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's always fun. And then you can just get 15, 20 minutes. And if you do it in the app, they have the master class app for iPhone, iPad, even Apple TV. Use it on your iPhone. Flip it in audio-only mode. Listen to a class like a podcast. That's what I enjoy doing. Get in your car. You can listen to somebody talking. One of my other favorites is Hans Zimmer. He teaches the art of, like, music scoring for movies. I mean, I love Hans Zimmer so much. Do you like Hans Zimmer? Wow. I do. That's the Inception. Yep. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's the Inception soundtrack. Wow. But anyway, no, I really do love Hans Zimmer. It's an interstellar soundtrack, especially. But anyway, you will love Masterclass. I highly recommend you check it out. This holiday, give the perfect gift of an annual Masterclass membership and get one free. It's a BOGO Masterclass. Go to masterclass.com slash home kit. That's masterclass.com slash home kit. Terms apply. BOGO. There's also a link in show notes. You can do it there. The annual subscription, you get all the classes. Masterclass.com slash home Home kit. Thank you, Masterclass, for sponsoring this episode. Now, Eufy. We used to talk about Eufy a lot because their cameras were HomeKit compatible, and they had some very inexpensive indoor, even outdoor cameras that wireless. But Eufy uh, has gone weird in recent years. Like, we weren't sure their HomeKit compatibility, what was going on. And now, news came out. This was actually Paul Moore on Twitter He's an information security consultant, and he dug into the Eufy stuff and found that Eufy, even though it was claiming it was not sending any video footage to the cloud or to the servers, that it was only private and stored locally, Eufy was actually sending some video footage to the cloud, to their servers, unbeknownst to the Eufy customers. Uh, we actually have an article on Apple Insider about it as well. We'll put that link in show notes, but... And that feels kind of dirty, Andrew. I don't know about you, Fee. <laughs> okay, so maybe I'm underreacting. <laughs> okay, to me, all right. this, this feels like a legitimate inadvertent bug that will be fixed quickly. Mm. Because they're mm. not uploading um, 
to be clear, they're not uploading your video footage to the cloud. They are not uploading your personal video, your, your security video, anything like that to their servers. What is getting sent is thumbnail images that are used mm. to, um, you know, to, to preview a video clip should they have been uploaded. So it seems like in their code, they had, they had stopped, you know, the video as it should, and they were still sending up the thumbnails to populate a, a list or whatever um, when you're viewing it remotely. So to me, it, it seemed like it was a bug, like, cause they're not uploading yeah. a video. It was just the thumbnails. I'm like, okay, they probably, it seems like it could have been accidental enough. And I'm glad they're not like, if they were uploading full video footage, that would be a much bigger deal to me. But this just seems like it, it might've been an accident, but I haven't gotten anything, heard anything um, in terms of their response to this. So hopefully we hear like an actual like response from Yuffie sooner rather than later. Yeah. I was just checking the Twitter and I see no updates from them on anything, but your video footage is not being shared. It's, it's a thumbnail, which is still private. It's still something that you did not want shared, which is still a problem that needs to be addressed. But I, yeah. I really do think this was a bug and not something nefarious like, ring giving carte blanche access to employees to pull up certain <laughs> video files like that feels different yeah i agree supposedly this is in our article that yuffie was using facial recognition on the uploads uh again like that could have been part of the bug like they just might do facial recognition on you know everything sent to yuffie yeah so again part of the bug but uh for me like i get the underreacting like i don't think this is like pitchfork pitchforks and torches like march to Yuffie and, uh, and, you know, throw stones at him. But it does help me. It does confirm in my mind when I get a camera, I would really love for it to be home kit secure video and not like the third party thing also. And not only so I don't have to pay for another subscription, but I don't know, just don't have to worry about security. Well, you don't, not that you don't have to worry about it, but I feel like security and privacy with home kit secure video is a lot more sure than when some of these, you know, cameras can use third party services. Now, one I will say Arlo has always been solid. I don't think we've ever heard news about Arlo ever having bugs like this or doing things behind users' backs. And their floodlight camera, my parents have that and, and it works really well for them. But I don't know. I, I try to go HSV HSV or nothing. You know what I mean? That's just me. <laughs> I guess that's just I, me. I mean there's other there's other benefits though that HSV still didn't have in. They're their recognition is still not as good as others like it is with Arlo. Natamo has amazing stuff out there in terms of, of, of their camera work that they've done. Uh, True. Eco B is True. solid though. They support HSV, but you can at least get remote monitoring, um, professional monitoring built in on that camera. And there's a boat that has the remote or the, um, the third party monitoring services as well. So it, it depends on, on what the priorities are, but, yeah, it just yeah. makes you okay. wary, and I wish HomeKit security was just a little more reliable in terms of its like motion detection, I guess, or the AI yeah, features. and features and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Well, we'll update you if uh, Yuffie says anything or if we see any news. Now, uh, Simon on Twitter actually gave us the heads up that the Philips Hue app was updated, and the long-awaited Hue Sync that had its whole other app that you had to use for like the Hue Sync HDMI box is now a part of the standalone Hue app. So you only need one Hue app now to do all your Hue light stuff. And if you also do the HDMI syncing, you can do that as well. Now, me being very excited, uh, we sat down last night to watch the last two episodes of Andor. Did you watch Andor? Have you seen that show? I did, but I'm behind because it's definitely when you okay. got to focus on. And Harrison does not allow me to focus on uh, a lot Anything. more period of time. So <laughs> I'm behind yeah. on several like more dramatic, like story driven shows where there's yes. like a lot of like looks and like, <laughs> you know, there's not enough, there's yeah, not yeah, enough exposition it. going on yeah, that yeah, I can do it without gotta, staring at the TV. You got to pay attention. Well, I, I, after finishing the series, we just finished last night. No spoilers. I highly recommend. I know some episodes were slow. I think it definitely was slow to start, but by the end, like it's all worth it. Highly recommend. But anyway, we went, sat down, go to watch it, and me, 
always liking to update things as soon as they're out. I was like, all right, let me let me update the Hue app. Let me run my sync box through there, and then we'll be good to go. And I went to do it. Unfortunately, Hue doesn't just like move your sync box over to the regular Hue app from the sync app. You actually have to remove it from the sync app and add it to the Hue app. And it was not a seamless process. And I had factory reset the Hue sync box. I was about to pair it. I was going through the process and it just would not find the Hue sync box. It would not pair for anything. I tried it for an hour last night, some multiple factory resets, turned off the five gigahertz Wi-Fi of the house just to see if that was an issue. Nothing. Like it was just being a pain in the butt. Wasn't finding it. It would pair with Bluetooth. My phone would connect via Bluetooth. I would put in the Wi-Fi password and then it, it just wouldn't find it. So I thought I was going to get on here and really complain. I mean, I guess I already have complained, but I was going to complain even more. But then this morning I was like, you know what? Let me see if I if it adds. I go there. I say the the light is white on the front, which means it's already connected to Wi-Fi. Try to find it. Boom. Finds it. No problem. I connect it to the, the Hue Hub. I, I don't know what was going on last night. I don't know if it just needs time Were to like, you, relax. Like, yeah. <laughs> Were you a little impatient? Like, did it just need some time to, I mean, to sort itself out? And you were like, let's go. Let's go. I mean, it, the light was white. I was going through the process in the app. Like, it was. I was going along <laughs> with it. I wasn't trying to rush it. I was, you know, letting it breathe or whatever. But anyway, this morning it worked fine. So if, it, if you have trouble moving your Hue sync box to the Hue app after the update, just... I don't know. Let it rest overnight. I guess I need it needs a uh, it needs a full night's sleep. I guess before it can pair. But anyway, so I got it in the new app. It is a, a different interface now. So this is what the Hue Sync Box control looks like in the Hue app now. There is a Sync tab down here at the bottom of the app, and that is for all the Hue Sync stuff. It tells you like all the controls are right there to start syncing. You just hit that little circle button. Toggle on the top is to turn the box on or off. And the little three dots gives you all the settings that you had in the Sync app. It uh, doesn't have any, you know, more or less features except, and this was one of the reasons why I wanted to update to this Hue update where everything's in the one app. My shortcut steps for the Hue Sync app stopped working a couple weeks ago. I had a shortcut set up where it would, you know, set the scene in my family room, turn on the Apple TV. Everything was set. But the Hue Sync Box shortcut steps stopped running. They, they, they started failing. And I figured maybe there's a server side thing. Maybe it's because they were moving it to the Hue app, maybe whatever. And so that's why I was kind of eager to do this update. Come to find out, those shortcut steps that the Hue Sync app gives you are not available in the standard Hue app when you update it. So there are no shortcut steps for the Sync Box in the Hue app. So I'm kind of like... I don't want to go through all that pairing process again. I imagine they'll add these shortcut steps, hopefully in the near future, but I'm just going to leave it alone. I'll manually turn on the syncing in the Hue app because they weren't working anyway. Like the the sync steps weren't working before. So whatever. Anyway, it's all in the same app. Update your Hue app. You can run your sync box through there. You don't need two apps. You can do just one. Nice to have it there. The entertainment area was stayed. So like I didn't have to tell the app again, like, Here's the light strip. Here's my Hue play bars. Like, I didn't have to do all that. The entertainment area stayed uh, set because that's, like, I guess a Hue setup or whatever. But, uh, yeah, so it's all in one app. Thank you, Simon, for the heads up. Uh, just hopefully they add shortcuts soon. If you're listening, Phillips, add shortcuts. There you go. Uh, now, you you have a bunch of, like, mini reviews here from products. I'll, I'll move my, my stuff down so so you can tell me. You got a kettle. You got some other stuff. What 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 do you got here? What is what are you talking about? Bunch of whole whole, whole bunch of little random random little mini reviews. We're just going to jump yeah. through. So the first one, which has been very helpful recently, um, I usually use it for coffee purposes. We've been using it for um, for Harrison's bottles to warm up water. Um, but this thing is just really really cool, and it is uh, you know connected. Like there's like an app connected version of this, so figured I'd mention it. Um, Fellow, they make a bunch of great coffee stuff, like the Ode Grinder. They have the Stag uh, pour over set. They have the Clara French press, but they also have a large array of their Stag EKG 
kettles. And I have the EKG Plus, I believe, which is like their app connected version, which is no longer one of their main versions. They have like the regular one and then they have like the pro version. Um, but yeah, it connects over Bluetooth so you can control it. And they have a bunch of like coffee brewing steps uh, or guides. So if you're doing like a, wow. a, a pour over, it'll give you like, okay, this is an ideal temperature. Make sure, you know, you pour this amount of water and then wait 30 seconds for that bloom to happen, all that stuff. But this thing looks really nice if you're looking it up over there, Stephen. Oh, yeah. um, but it looks really cool. There's tons of different models and various colors, and they even have like wood handles and accents to make it even fancier. And it's awesome. So you just dial in your temperature within a few moments. You got hot water all the way up to 212 degrees. I think the lowest is just above 100, and that's what we've been kind of putting it at for. Uh, you know, whatever our, the bottles and stuff are supposed to be, but just super useful. This thing is really awesome. It looks great. It's uh, like the gooseneck style if you're not watching the video. So it has like the large spout that comes out the front, but it's very thin and it's precise mm. for doing like a pour over so you can get the exact spots, but also helpful for tea. You just make some, make some this, this dirty water with it and it's really <laughs> nice to get a good temperature on it. So I've been using this a lot recently between coffee harrison and now tea super useful product really happy uh that we bought this now this thing is not inexpensive it, it has at least here on amazon it's 165 dollars for the for yeah the for, I mean, for a, yeah i mean that all their kettles range from like 130 or so to above 200 depending on the materials and like the wood accents and stuff like that it's not a a cheap electric kettle for sure but it looks it's like a statement piece like i mean it it looks really nice nice. other than yeah there's 146 for a couple of those colors on there oh ekg i'm a coffee person so 225 wow that is the thing Mm -hmm. it tells you the temperature i mean it's nice oh you can you put it on a schedule that's cool that's very cool plus the app Okay. You walk out in the morning, got hot water. Perfect. Very cool. All right. So that's the kettle. Nice. Fellow kettle. kettle. uh, Moft. What is the moft? Yeah. So um, I believe we have someone else on staff going to do a a review for AI on this guy. So I'm just going to mention it for for our audience here because I am convinced I'm going to make MagSafe part of Smart Home in some way. And eventually Apple needs to add like some automation to it or something so that we can justify all of this. But I think this is too cool to not mention, Steven. This is the Snap Stand Power Set from Moft. So it is a MagSafe battery pack, but also has like a wallet and they're two separate things. So you can use a battery pack by itself snap on a MagSafe wallet, whether it's Moth's wallet, you could also go with somebody else's, but that snaps right on there. It's wrapped in a vegan leather. So it just, mm-hmm. it feels really nice. They're, every one I've tried has been plastic, like garbagey plastic. This feels really nice in the hand. They come in different colors and it's a USB-C. It has pass-through uh-huh. charging. Uh-huh. So you plug in the USB-C cable and you can power up your phone at the same time. So there it is connected. We'll let the camera figure its stuff out again. It's chonky when you have both of them on there, but obviously you can just sure. use one or the other. And then the wallet has that built-in stand. The wallet's been out for a while, but so you can use yeah. a stand at the same time. I mean, I think it's so cool. Put your phone sideways. You can still charge while using a stand, watching the latest episode of Andor, like all sorts of fun stuff. I just thought this was a really neat idea because I haven't seen many that like stacked like this. Like usually you'll see a battery pack, you'll see a wallet. I haven't seen them that connect together to one yeah, thing. Cool. So you don't take off your wallet while you're charging, then lose your wallet somewhere, keep right. them together. And I like mm. the the vegan leather wrap on it. And it's got a little, I believe like I can't tell if they're metal or plastic, but like a uh, cro- metallic looking buttons and stuff on the side. Really cool little gadget. Very cool. That is fun. And so does the wallet, can that attach to the phone without the battery? You might have done it. I was looking at the yes, website. Yes, it's a standard MagSafe wallet, so it just snaps on there. Um, That's nice. Use this for all of your walleting, your walleting needs. That back pulls down, so there's yep. your card access. So And also a grip for your phone. Oh. You can slip your hand in there. Yeah, that so boom, is you got nice. grip, you got a stand, you got a wallet, and then slap on a battery in between. That's pretty slick. 
That's pretty slick. I, pretty I do like that. Pretty slick. That's nice. See? See? All right. Link in show notes to that as well. And then finally, <laughs> you have a tripod review. What is yeah. a tripod? The P-O-D is capital. Okay. This is pretty sweet. It's a very minor thing, but it's really cool. Check out my HomePod Mini here. <laughs> okay. I see it. It's a little stand for your HomePod Mini. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I got you. I see you. Tripod HomePod Mini. Is this you got it on Amazon? Is this on Amazon? No, let me find a link here for you. Do all the work around here. I'm not, well, I'm looking. Hold on, hold on, because <laughs> I because I think it might be on Amazon too. Is this is this the thing you're talking about? <laughs> Tripod. Tripod. Yes, that's the brand. Yes, there you go. Yes, yes, yes. It's on sale. It's on was... sale. Normally uh, thirty five, you can get it for thirty. And uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, talk about a way to class up your space. It does look nice. Put a tripod on there. And you also, oh, the white like oak. It. Oh, I do like that. I do like that. Hmm. I might get one of these. They say there are acoustic so benefits to this. I don't okay. know if I believe them, but it's also HomePod <laughs> Mini. Like, we're not even talking about, like, big HomePod here. We're talking about HomePod Mini. Uh, but yeah. I still like it. I think this is a, a great idea. That's cool. I think, you know, full price is a little expensive, but. Is that your hand in this cool. picture? Is that your hand? <coughs> no, I don't think so. No, it's not. <laughs> it looks like your hand and your and your watch. That's funny. Um, <sighs> should I buy this right now? Should I just buy it on the air? I've never bought something where you, you can actually see me buy it. Um, hold on. Let, let me let me turn the screen sharing off for a second because I don't know if it's going to show my uh, my address and billing info, which it did. And that's why I'm glad I turned it off. Let me get this. Uh huh. Place your order. I just I just got one of these. I'll share my screen. As long as the order screen... Oh, it has my address. Poof. Well, it has... Here, I'll show you this. This is... Uh, I just bought it. It's been a while since I bought something live on the air. Here it is. And you can see overnight, 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. It's arriving tomorrow. <laughs> so Perfect. I'll show it to you tomorrow. Very cool. I, I do think, um, you know, for HomePod Mini... Which this is very much a HomeKit device because it's one of the few Apple devices with thread, but they have the outlet. I've been using these all over the house. The HomePod Mini outlet mounts. Let me share my screen one more time. This is a good week to watch the episode on YouTube. Let me just say that. Let's Apparently, yeah. Um, you know, I actually have a couple of these, which are like it holds the HomePod and the plug, and then you plug it into the wall, and it like kind of hangs down. I have a few of those, especially in the bathroom. I have those in the bathroom. And then there's also one that's like a shelf. Uh, that's a that's a different kind of one, I guess, if you have it. I use these kinds where it, like, basically replaces your outlet plate. Mm -hmm. And you get a shelf above the outlet, so it's kind of out of the way. And I have several of those around the house. And I really like that. You can even get it to hold, like, a Sonos uh, size speaker, but you can use it for HomePod Mini. I think this might be the one that I have. Yeah. I remember so when this we is... talked about the ceiling mounts for the HomePod Minis, which I thought were so cool. Like, just mount them upside down in your ceiling and then route the cables inside. I feel like that's got to mess with the acoustics, though, right? I mean, isn't that... Uh... I don't think they were mounted, know. like, in the ceiling, just, like, to your ceiling. Like, I don't know how okay. they were, like, attaching on there, but... okay. I don't know. Okay. I was just, just, just saying. All right. Uh, well, that's very cool. Thank you for those mini reviews. Uh, you also have a complaint about the Apple TV 4K. Um, well, uh, we'll get to that in one second. I just wanted to mention that the uh, I had a bunch of people over the house recently, and I had, was showing a lot of people the smart home stuff. Everyone really likes to see all the smart home stuff. But there's a few things that really stand out to, like, this is gonna, I don't mean to say this disparagingly, but like normal people, like non, like non techie people, like people who are not, like people who don't know brand names for HomeKit devices off the top of their head. You know what I mean? Like they don't know Eve, they don't know Wemo, but they like the smart home thing. They want to get into it, and it's interesting to see what HomeKit devices appeals to people who are not super into the space. You know, who are not like super invested already. 
And from my experience, just going around, showing people the house, showing people different things, people really liked seeing the home theater set up with the Hue Sync box, especially when I had a scene where, like, all the lights turn out and the TV turns on. Like, doing all of that with a single button, that was pretty impressive. But the the two devices that really people are impressed by or, like, actually want the link for, that's how you know someone really is interested because they're like, can you send me the link to, like, buy that because I want that? The garage door opener, that really impresses people. And so especially when I tell them the Maris garage door opener can work with most of you, like dumb garage door openers, you don't need to replace the whole thing. People are really into that. And the fact that it's only $50, it's an easy inroad. There's no hub required. People like that idea. So the Maris garage door opener is usually a, a popular thing. And then the motion blinds. Everybody loves the motion blinds because it's like blows their mind. Like, whoa, there's a shade moving by itself. And like, it's not typically thought of to be a, you know, everyone thinks like, oh, light bulbs and plugs. Like that's the smart home. So when they see an actual thing like shades and a garage door opener, people really like that. And finally, everyone has questions about Sonos. I think it's just such a house, like of all the household names, Sonos is one of those brands where people already know the brand and they know they want it, but they don't know why or they don't have the details. And so Sonos uh, is definitely, everyone asks about it. Everyone asks about the Arc. A lot of people ask about the Beam. They're like, how do you like the Beam? We want to get a Beam and maybe the Sub Mini. Had a couple people ask about that. And the Sonos Move uh, really impresses people, like how good the Move sounds. And the little charging base, the little ring is really convenient. And the fact that you just like carry it anywhere, people really like the Move. And so when it comes to like smart home devices, it's not really smart home. It's like AirPlay, you know, AirPlay 2, connecting into the TV and stuff. But Sonos, everyone like wants to know about it. And Sonos had some good sales over Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, the Sub Mini was not on sale, which I was kind of glad because I paid full price like a couple months ago. And I was like, I'm going to kick myself if they put it on sale. Uh, but they didn't. They know that like everybody wants that. So that was like full price. But uh, yeah, people people are interested in the Sonos stuff. So I just thought that was interesting seeing like non techie people's perspective of a smart home, and uh, that's what people like. So there you go. Yeah, which it kind of mirrors what. So a couple things that all tie in. So first, like the Sonos stuff, totally agree. One of my friends is looking for a sound bar, and he's looking, and <clears throat> he's like, he's like, which ones are you using? Like Sonos. He's like, okay, Sonos. Why are they so good? And not asking because he like heard them and knows they're good. He just like knows the name Sonos and it's supposed to be good. And he wants to know why. And especially with the sound bars, when they don't come with subs, he's like, do they actually, like, you can, you could get a cheap one for $150 that has a subwoofer with it. And why would you pay so much for a Sonos with no subwoofer included? So Yes, uh, I definitely have gotten questions on Sonos and kind of what makes them unique and what makes them stand out and stuff. And then I was recently buying a new car and, you know, the paperwork process is super fast and easy. It takes you like 30 seconds or so. That, no, that's not accurate. Sarcasm. Um, Sarcasm. <laughs> oh, man. We had like, an, we had like a 9 a.m. appointment to like sign things. And I'm pretty sure we didn't get out of there. It's like one. It, oh. it was a uh, laborious process. We got Harrison who was, who was getting fussy and stuff. So sure. it was a long thing to get through, but Ugh. it was lengthened because me and the finance guy, he just kept asking questions about uh, smart home stuff <laughs> and like the things that he was like most excited about. Like one of them was the, the smart shades and he kept going yes. to bed. He's like, it's literally a morning chore for me to go through the house, open them in every room. And like, if I just had some, like a scene, you know, you know, an automation, I could literally open them all at once and close them all. I'm like, yeah. It's that yeah. easy. So he was, he was taking notes. He was like, I'm going to listen to the podcast. And I actually ran in there for something else a couple of days later. He's like, I was listening to your podcast. So he might be listening to this. If so, hey. hi, you're a story in our podcast now. But <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, the, the, the motion blinds or, or smart blinds were definitely a big thing. And the other question that I get a lot, I don't know if you got with your little tour, Stephen, um, our neighbors, we love them dearly, but they're Android folks. And when they, so they don't have like the option of using home kit and they're kind of put like, they love the idea of all the smart home stuff, but they don't like the first thing he said is like, I just don't want anything that, that connects to anything. Right. And like a sending right. out probably, I feel we've got enough ears because like, we got an Amazon speaker in the house 
And, you know, first I, I don't like, your first you know, problem. A, a camera, right? <laughs> um, and, like, his first thing is, like, you know, a, a doorbell can't, like, ring. And I'm like, well, yeah. Ring is the whole thing. And if you want encryption, you lose out on half the features, like your, your smart notifications with live previews and stuff like that. So it's like you can either have the, the privacy and the security with encryption, or you can get like the usability and functionality uh, with like the smart previews and those other features that get stripped away. And that's such a thing that we don't have to worry about in HomeKit. And it's something that we almost take like for granted as we're doing it. There's a spider right here. <laughs> What? what? I'm holding him by a string. I'm wiggling him. What He's is just happening? hanging out. You this is like an important nuclear side, situation. Buddy. We can't see anything. Okay. You look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, what? their biggest what? stuff was like the security and their privacy. And when I was telling yeah. them about the HomeKit stuff, I'm like, oh, yeah, everything is fully encrypted, processed locally. Um, everything, get, like even all the AI, AI stuff for home yep. secure video is processed locally on your home hub, which is like your Apple TV. It's your only access point outside the home and all video is just natively, uh, you know, fully encrypted. And the only way to, to kind of gain access to it would be through your Apple ID, which has to have two factor authentication enabled. So you've got like just so many layers of security there. And he was like very surprised by a lot of this stuff. And I think I'm wondering how much that is a, a pervasive thought amongst hmm. people who haven't taken the, the jump into a smart home. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I saw similar things to what you did. Okay. Well, that, that's interesting. I, th- I think it's uh, it's rising though in people's mind space, you know, that they want more smart stuff in their home. They see what's possible. So yeah, cool. Well, uh, finally, uh, the last thing in our note here, it's been here for a couple of weeks uh, Apple TV 4K, ugh, ugh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you mean by this? What? Okay, we mentioned this. Have you had a chance to try your mm-hmm. remote more, Stephen? You know what? No, I still use my phone. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I forgot. I forgot to use the remote more. Is it still giving you problems? It's still giving me issues. So we have like four mm-hmm. Apple TVs in the house. Two right. of them are the two new models. Okay. With the new USB C Siri remotes. Right, right. They constantly do not connect. Mm. I'll hit buttons on the remote, I'll button mash the remote, and the Apple TV will still not wake up. Or if it's already awake, it will not be controlled. And I can do it instantly through the through the remote app on my iPhone and control it that way, but it doesn't do it on the TV itself, like through the actual remote, the physical Siri remote. And it's driving me bonkers. And then sometimes I have to like plug it in. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, charging. I'm like, yeah, no crap. Like, will you control it now? And yes, it controls it. And then sometimes it doesn't. Like here in my studio, I was trying, I plugged it in yesterday. Still, still won't connect. Still doesn't control the Apple TV. Mm. And it's driving me insane. Right. The other weird thing, Stephen, again, with, um, I think it's the new models, is it randomly pauses like into a video at like two minutes. What? pauses and then I'll have to like hit play again on the remote or the remote app to continue it. And that's I just weird. think that's also very bizarre. Um, and I don't know if we ever fully complained about the fact that the remote app is no longer, or like on your phone, um, it's no longer just a, a you know popover inside of control center. It's a whole like separate app. So it kicks you out of whatever you were doing. And then yeah. you have to switch it back. I hate it, Stephen. I hate it so much. Wait, um, wait, 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 like wait, sometimes wait. I, I'll I, mean, be... I, I still have it in my control center right there. Yes, tap it, tap it, Stephen. Oh, oh, I'm gonna tap a bunch of stuff here. So I tap it, <laughs> and it goes, it goes to that. Yep, yeah. you're now in a full app. So if you were right. in another app, it just switched you over. Oh, I see. Okay, let me see. So before it was just a popover inside of Control Center. And then mm. it kept your app active in the background. But now I'll be doing something like filling out a, a payment sheet on a website and I got to control the Apple TV, you know, because I can't use the physical remote and I'll go to use the app and control center and it'll kick me out of what I was doing. And then mm. I'm like, okay, play. And I go back to my app and it's like, 
you, you're now signed out. You have to authenticate with your face or your password again. And then your information that you had just typed has been wiped because you were like midway through a payment form. And for security reasons, they like cleared it all out and you have to start over again. And it's so frustrating. I hate that it's a separate app instead of the slide over. And they even killed off the, the annoying thing is they killed off the separate app, Steven. It oh, was Brian, a separate app that you had. They're like, no, 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 it's just Control Center. And then they're like, no, 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 it's just Control Center, but that secretly links you to another app that you can't actually open unless you use Control Center. And it just seems weird and annoying. Well, and I don't understand it. What's what's weird? Hold on, let me see. Uh, so I'm looking in the app library real quick. TV remote is there in the app library. I see it there. You can delete it. I wonder what happens if I... Oh, no, wait a minute. minute. I was say, there is an app called TV Remote, so I don't know if that's the one you're looking at. Yeah, that was the one I was looking at. It was... It's not... It's not that. (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) So, it is not the Apple TV Remote. But you do see, like, when you have the the app switcher up there... App switcher. You see the Apple TV Remote. Like, it shows up like an app that you can quit... But it's not like if you search the app library for TV remote. Oh, it does show remote. It does show remote right there. So there's a, it's under as Is remote. that the old, hold on. Is that the old app, Wait, Stephen? Should I delete it? Should I, should I try and delete it and see hold what happens? Hold on. I think, I think, Stephen, that might be. Is that the old one? <laughs> Do I have the old one? <laughs> remote. I think you have the old, the old remote. Try to open it. Oh, try to open it. Look at this. You try to open it. It says TV remote has moved to control center. (laughs) Wow. What's going on, Steven? I don't even know. What is it doing then? Why why is it on my phone? All right. I guess I'll delete it. I don't know. Should I delete Delete it? it. Should I keep it for nostalgia effect? I don't even know. Oh, my gosh. I don't know what I'm doing. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to leave it. Okay. Anyway, that's wonky. Yeah. I don't don't know. know. Try your remote. If anybody else is having similar issues... I'd love to know if I'm not the only one, but I think it's crazy that it's happening to both the two new Apple TVs and not my older Apple the TV 4Ks. It's just the two new ones. So yeah, I don't know what's changed with the Siri remotes, but they just keep disconnecting. Oh, let me, let me, uh, let me just remind me to use my Apple TV remote tonight at 8 p.m. I uh, sent myself a reminder. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to try it tonight. I'll see if it's as buggy uh, as you say. Look right there. Use my Apple TV remote. Very good. All right. Well, let's follow up. If, you, if listeners, if you have any experience with Apple TV remote, let us know. <laughs> Had a bunch of stuff. You should watch the show this week on YouTube uh, for Andrew's health. Watch the show on YouTube. It'll help Andrew feel better. YouTube.com slash HomeKit Insider. Links to everything <sighs> we talked about there. Give us a five-star review. Subscribe to the channel. You know what to do. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. See ya.